Hey, hey, hey. It's Sunday school time again. My name is Maria, and I am so excited that you chose to join us here at Bethel Baptist Church Ministries for our virtual Sunday school for August the 30th, 2020. Can you believe we're in August already? I guess most of you have have either gone back to school face to face or you're learning virtually. Um, either way you're doing it, I hope you're doing well in this first couple of weeks or week or so of school. And I hope that you are still safe and washing your hands and, and quarantining and being as safe as you can in your home. Again, this is Sunday School and I am so excited that our Sunday School Department and our media ministry and our pastor, Pastor Johnson, has agreed to continue to allow us to bring you Sunday School in the safety of your home. And this week's lesson is called True Wisdom. True Wisdom. If there's a true wisdom, it means there's probably a false wisdom as well. So we're going to learn about those. We're going to get into our lesson just after we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We love you. We thank you for this time, God, to look into your word. We invite you in this time, God. We invite you into the homes of the children that are watching, the teens that are watching, the families that are watching together, God. And we ask now, God, for godly wisdom the wisdom that comes from above. And Father, we thank you that we're able to recognize false wisdom. And we thank you, Father, that for helping us in those areas, Father, that we need to work on, Father, as it relates to godly wisdom. And we ask these and other blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. True wisdom. As I said, as I said earlier, if there's a true wisdom, then that suggests that there's a false wisdom as well. And we're going to learn about that. Our lesson this week has only two points. We're looking still in the book of James. James, as we have learned in our previous lessons, is the half-brother of Jesus. And he, uh, his goal and his aim and his call was to make sure that Christ's followers, Christians, were being um, steadfast in their walk with Christ. They were living the life that Christ spoke of and that they were follow true followers of Christ who gave us pointers. He gave us encouragement. And sometimes he scolded us a little bit when we didn't do what we're supposed to do. But it's all to make sure that we are the type of Christians that are worthy to follow Christ. And we're still in the book of James. We're wrapping up this summer session. Uh, and that means we're headed into fall. But this is our last uh, book. Last time that we're looking uh, at the book of James. We have a focal scripture this week and I'm going to read that and then we'll get into our lesson. So our focal scripture is says, but wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. That is godly wisdom. Uh, it is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. That's James chapter 3, verse 17. So let's look into our lesson. So this week, our lesson is chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. And then we skip down to chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. And again, we're going to just lift up two points. I'm going to encourage you guys. And then we're going to finish our enjoying the rest of our weekend. All right, James chapter 3, verse 13, starting at verse 13. And we're in the New Living Translation. I do have a, um, the message version in um, a one, a, one section that we're going to read, but we'll read that later. But as always, get the a version of the Bible that makes sense to you. Get the version of the Bible that makes sense to you, where you can easily understand. Um, as I study lessons, a lot of times I'll read it in the New Living the King James, and then I'll skip over to the message because it all kind of to help help me make it make sense. And that's what we're here to do. Help the word of God make sense to you. James chapter three, verse 13. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it. <laughs> How simple is that? If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it. How do we prove it? Let's find out. By living an honorable life, doing good works, with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous, oh my, 
and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover it up. Don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. We probably all know some people that have the tendency to do that, right? Uh, verse 15, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Wow. Wow. 16. For who, wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Can you agree with that? I certainly can. Verse 17, we read it earlier, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and it always is sincere. It is always sincere. That is wisdom from above. Verse number 18, and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace, rightfully so, and reap a harvest of righteousness. Now we're going to skip down to chapter 5, beginning at verse 7. James chapter 5, beginning, beginning at verse 7. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmer who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and the spring. They eagerly, eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. They plant a seed and they wait patiently, eagerly waiting on that seed to ripen, to come to fruition, to grow up tall and strong, ready to be picked. But they have to be patient while doing that. All right. Verse number eight, you too must be patient. Take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. We've heard the Lord's return and the, the Lord is near, that coming is near. That's twice that has been mentioned in this uh, verse of scriptures. So that's so very important. The Lord's return is the hope of Christians. That's our great hope. So it's very, very vital and important. I've heard since I was a little girl that Jesus was soon to come. And you probably have heard that most, if you've been in church most of your life, you've heard that too. The Lord is soon to come. He's coming back soon. Well, guess what? He is coming back soon. We just don't know what soon is. And God's time is not ours. So we want to make sure we're ready. And James is helping us to do that, to wait patiently, showing us how to do that. All right? Uh, let's see. Verse number nine. Don't grumble about each other's, each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Only God can judge me. I think that's Pac said that, all right? Um, number, verse number 10, for examples, uh, uh, for examples of patience in suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now, in lessons past, we did a whole lesson, uh, I think a month worth, about uh, talking about different prophets. And some of those prophets, as, this, as our scriptures have suggested, were extremely reluctant about doing what God had called them to do. They made every excuse in the book as to why they were inadequate or unqualified for the job that God had called them to do. Now, how are you going to explain to God, the one that made you, God, I can't do this because I can't talk right. God, I can't do this because I'm tall or I'm skinny or I'm black or I'm just a girl or I'm whatever. Why, how are you going to explain to God, the one who made you, to tell, to tell him that you can't do what he called you to do? That's silly, isn't it? But we all, wait. We, we all do it, including the prophets. But what James is trying to tell us is be patient in that. Even the prophets were reluctant to do what God had called them to do, but they ended up doing it because they were patient and they used that godly wisdom that we talked about earlier. All right? Now, verse number 11. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. Yes, we do. For instance, you know about Job. And if you haven't read or known about the, the story of Job, uh, Job is a book in the Bible. 
And if you would, take some time, uh, just Google Job and find out all of the things that Job had to go through. But then it's going to tell us that Job had to endure. He had to be patient with God and with the circumstances that he was in, but he came out victorious. So that's what the, James is telling us. A man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tender Tenderness, I'm sorry, and mercy. Verse number 12, this is our last verse. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath. Never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Never take a, an oath. It says just, by, just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned. Let your word be your word. Word is bond, right? Word is bond. Just let your word be your word. If you say you're going to do something, let that be enough. Don't have people asking you to swear by your mama or your grandma or swear on you know, none of that. Let your words be your words. All right. Two kinds of wisdom. Let's look at it. There's um, godly wisdom, and we looked at that. So let's look at godly wisdom. The Bible tells us in our lesson, there's a couple things that were mentioned when we, when we were talking about godly wisdom, all right? It said godly wisdom is, first of all, pure. It's peace-loving. It's gentle at all times. It's willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism. And lastly, godly wisdom is always sincere. So what James wants us to do is to live Christ-like lives. Live like our big brother Jesus. Live like Christ followers. And in order to do that, we have to possess these qualities here and, uh, that go along with godly wisdom. I'm going to read them again. Uh, pure, peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others, full of, the mercy, uh, full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds, showing no favoritism, and is always sincere. I'm going to raise my hand and say, I am strong in some of these, but I'm weak in some of these areas as well. There's some things, some areas that I could certainly improve in. How about you? I'm going to give you a challenge until the next time we meet up again. If there are some of these areas that, that are, are, are qualifications for godly wisdom, if there are some of those areas that you're weak in, Will you, can I challenge you to work on making those strengths? Can I challenge you to ask God to help you in those areas where you're weak? I'm going to do it too. We're going to do it together. That is the, the beauty of being able to be Christ followers. If there's things that we lack in our lives that God wants us to have, all we have to do is ask him, and he'll grant that for us, especially if it's something that he wants for us to have. And he's already put down on the inside of us every single thing that we need to carry out his plan and his purpose for our lives. So don't say, well, maybe I wasn't meant to be peace-loving. Maybe I wasn't meant to be gentle at all times. Maybe I wasn't meant to show mercy to others. Yes, you were. And guess what? It's down on the inside of you, but sometimes it's going to take some digging to get it out. But all we have to do is ask. Ask God, and he'll make sure that he grants it to, um, to us, gives it to us. That's a challenge. Are you able and willing to take that challenge with me? I hope you are. All right, until the next time we meet up, we're going to work on our, our, our weaknesses as it relates to godly wisdom. So that's godly wisdom. Let's talk about this false wisdom or this worldly or carnal uh, wisdom uh, that, that's going on. It stems from bitter jealousy and self interest. It said in here about self-ambition, jealousy, all right? Uh, earthly, it's earthly, it's unspiritual, and it's demonic. Wow. It's jealousy, um, self-ambition, and it leads to sin. Can you imagine if, you, if, there's, if, if that jealousy uh, and self-ambition can lead to sin? Can you think of some, more, from some times when others around you or maybe stories that you've heard of people being jealous that led to sin? I'm sure the court system are full of people that got really, really jealous over somebody that they once loved and they claim that they still love and they, that person moved on 
And that person was so, so jealous that it led to them harming that person or the new person that they, were, um, that they loved or someone in that person's circle. So jealousy can lead to sin. Um, Self-ambition. If you are, are too, so driven by your own plans, your own thoughts, your own desires, that you'll do anything to get to it, can you imagine that that would cause uh, you to maybe fall into some sins? I'm going to uh, cut, be cutthroat or be uh, to lie or to be uh, scheming or conniving. None of the things that have to do with gentleness and, and not showing favoritism and being merciful, and none of that sounds like jealousy or self-ambition, right? So those, that's false wisdom. And there's so many ways in these days and time because of uh, social media, because we, are, we have computers right in our, our back pockets or in our pocketbooks as it relates to our phones, we can look up anything. We can look up anything. And that can cause us to fall into areas in our lives where we, it is so hard to come back from. So you want to be very, very, very careful with that. And that also leads to patience. The Bible tells us to be patient for the return of the Lord is coming. Jesus is soon to come. And what are we going to do while we're waiting on Jesus to come? How are you going to act while you're waiting? How, how, how patient are you? What do you do if you have to stand in a line or if you have to wait on an email or you're waiting on somebody to text you or you're waiting on your parents to get home to go somewhere or to do something with you? Are you do you wait patiently? Hmm. That means you're not grumbling. You're not fussing. You don't have an attitude. You're not short with people. You're just calmly and patiently Waiting. I know you can't use this, uh, the same word into, in the definition, but to wait patiently suggests that you're going to wait with trusting that what is coming up the road, what you're waiting on, is, is going to come in its time, right? Patiently wait. And the Bible even suggests that patiently waiting is endurance, and that suggests that you're going through a hardship, but you're doing it with grace and patience. Do you possess, any of, do you possess that quality? I think that I am a very patient person. More patient when I was younger than I am now, but I have, I think, I think, I seem, I happen to think that I'm pretty patient. But that took a lot, a lot, a lot of times for me to practice being patient. And that's sometimes, sometimes what God will do for us. Remember I asked you to, for those, that challenge on being uh, pure and peace loving and merciful and gentle at all times? Well, I guess, guess what? When we take on that challenge, we're going to face instances and situations that's going to cause us to practice what we are preaching, to practice. You can't just be gentle with, without in any, any, any ways to show that, oh, I'm gentle. So what God will probably do, what he may do while we're, work, while we're practicing this challenge is give us opportunities to be gentle. Give us opportunity to be patient. That's where I was that's where I was before. So in order for you to be patient, God is going to present to you uh, examples and situations where you have to practice being patient. And what James has asked us to do throughout all of these lessons is let me show you how Christ did it. Let me show you how to do uh, practice patience and have godly wisdom so that you can be a a, an example, a good example of being a Christ follower. Amen? So you've got a challenge. Look back at what it takes to have godly wisdom. What are those characteristics of godly wisdom? And, and, and reevaluate and do a self-examination of those areas where you fall short. And let's see if we can work on those areas and improve them so that we can be wonderful examples of being Christ followers. That's our lesson for this week. Isn't it short and sweet? But that's how the word of God is. It is it's so sweet to us. And like I always say, and I'm probably not going to stop saying that, practical application on a day-to-day basis is what these uh, Sunday school lessons are about. That's what the Bible is about, so that we can live an abundant life. So I hope that you take the challenge to grow in some of those areas. I hope that you're staying safe. I hope that you are washing your hands and wearing your mask when you need to and practice 
godly wisdom. Until next time, I'll see you in September. Bye-bye. Take care.